Yes, it's a good thing that all our Super Eagles players are doing well in Europe because we know what is uh, ahead of us. The AFCON is just uh, a month in between from now uh, that will be going to the AFCON 2023 to be played in 2024 in Cote d'Ivoire. And it's a good thing that, like I said, that the Super Eagles players, those that will be parading at the Nations Cup, are doing well for their respective club in Europe. And it's a good news and for Jose Pissero, it's a good news for the NFF, and it's a good news for Nigerian citizens and football lovers all over the country, that all our players are, are doing well in Europe. On that note, I will be welcoming you proper to the show Sports Update on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. Like I started, we are going to be looking at extreme seven Super Eagles players to watch out for this weekend. And they are fantastic players, good players. They are up and running. They are starters in their respective club in Europe. Okay, let's quickly go, go straight uh, to those players. Uh, uh, for Frank Onyenka, fantastic minutes against Chelsea over the weekend where they uh, defeated Chelsea right there in Stamford Bridge. He came in as a substitute and he was rock solid, stopping every uh, attack uh, uh, prowess from uh, Chelsea, the likes of uh, uh, the young man, uh, the England uh, man. He was able to uh, stop the twat those they are attacking uh, uh, play. We have Adam Ako, a man who was fantastic for Montpellier. Also last weekend, getting that goal that gave uh, Montpellier all the three points. And Kalechi has been fantastic for Leicester City and he will be in action tonight. We will get there. Victor Boniface was a handful for Freiburg over the weekend, uh, though he didn't score a goal, but it was, uh, he, he showed some, uh, in fact, it was fantastic uh, over the weekend or last weekend also for Bayer Leverkusen, and they are topping the table. Ademola Lukman, who is back up and running for Atlanta. Good guy. Moses Simon, a player who's just won, uh, we talked about this on the money show, who just won the Nantes uh, Player uh, of the Month Award. And Taiwa Woni coming back from injury also, getting some good uh, minutes uh, in the second half uh, of that game against uh, Liverpool, his, parent, his former club, Liverpool at Anfield. They lost that game 3 last weekend, and he will be ready over this weekend to do justice uh, to uh, at least uh, to the opposition uh, defense and that is uh, there are about seven of these players to watch out for this weekend and all of these players are doing well apart from Adam Ako who has not really gotten uh, uh, super Eagles color but he is fantastic player and uh, now let's uh, go straight to Plateau State where Abba Michael will be joining us on Sports Update this evening Abba Michael uh, welcome to Sports Update uh, uh, on Trust TV Okay, now you've seen the seven players uh, uh, that well, we should be watching out for, the Super Eagles player to be watching out for uh, this weekend. And like I, I started with the, from, uh, with the show, we know what is ahead of us. The Nations Cup is fast approaching and uh, we, it's just that we just need to have all our players up and running, physically fit, psychologically fit, injury free before Nations Cup. And this player, they will be in action for their respective club this weekend. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm expecting uh, Coach Jose Pizarro uh, to keep a close eye on these players. I mean, we really need these players to be able to uh, win the forthcoming AFCON. I mean, it's, it's rare to see uh, so many Nigerian players at a point in time uh, shining like a, uh, like a million stars. I mean, the last time we had this was probably in 2013. I mean, when we won the AFCON, but right now, it's like we're approaching another golden age of the Super Eagles football, uh, just like we had in the mid-90s, the Amokachis, I mean, uh, the, the Babayaros, uh, the, uh, the, those, those big guys who made us proud. We had a golden age in different eras. Now we're having another golden age, and I expect our boys, the Hiana Chos, the Chukwezes, Osimen, a bonny face, I mean, Onyeka, uh, we hope Adam Ako keeps uh, improving. And of course, uh, Ademola Lukman, uh, we are very happy that uh, our stars, I mean, are making us proud. But we want to see them replicate this for the Super Eagles at the next half month. Yes, you want to see them replicate this uh, for the Super Eagles at the next AFCON. Now, out of the seven players uh, that I just uh, uh, mentioned, that we just mentioned, which of them are you not comfortable with? 
Well, uh, Adam Ako still has a long way to go. Uh, he has not gotten a call off yet. Uh, so uh, he needs to still take his game to the next level. Uh, but I think the rest of them are good enough to be uh, play for the Super Eagles uh, right at the moment. Okay. But I, I'm particularly worried about uh, Frank Onyeka. You know, since he came back from that uh, injury, he has not really been getting the starting um, when, because he, he was a starter when Brentford uh, got uh, promoted to the Nigerian Premier League. Uh, I said Nigerian Premier League to the English Premier League, I beg your pardon. But now, after the injury worries and rest, um, he has not really been getting uh, that, uh, that uh, starting uh, this thing for, for, for his uh, team, Brentford. Yes, I mean, it starts football for you. Uh, when you're coming back from injury on a side that is quite competitive, is you need to gradually walk your way back to the starting eleven. Uh, so it's a tall order for him. It's left for him to see how he can walk his way back. They always have training sessions. So he has to prove to the coach uh, that he deserves that starting berth. And I believe we have the next one or two months for him to get back to full form. If he can do just that, we will see him starting and he will definitely get the call up uh, that he deserves yes he will definitely get the call up that he deserves the good thing is that himself and his brentford coach have the same uh, name frank frank okay uh, still staying uh, with the super egos now uh super, former super egos player ex super egos player dimeji lawan a prophet says the super egos will lift the next afcon in Côte d'Ivoire. that is afcon 2023 I don't know about Michael if you actually agree with Dimeji Lawa. Uh, first of all, I think I remember him watching him as a child. Uh, his nickname was Kabongo, and I think he played in the uh, Under 17 World Cup, and I think sometimes Saudi 89. I remember watching him as a kid. Uh, he was one of the shining uh, stars of that era, and if there were rumors that Real Madrid wanted to sign him as far back as uh, 30 something years ago. Uh, yes, of course, uh, he was interviewed recently at Ibadan. Yes, he also played for three SC Ibadan uh, in recent past. So he has the moral standing uh, to make a prediction on whether we are going to win the AFCON or not. But I tell you what, he is right on paper. He is right. We have all it takes. So I believe him that we, the coach needs to do a better job to harness the talents that we have. But I share the same thoughts with Oladi Mejilawa. Okay, you share the same thought with Oladid Meji Lawa. Let's quickly look at uh, the Super Eagles team. Uh, we've talked of this, about this over and over. Now, let, let me also, let me also uh, stay here from you. Where do you think we are lacking? If you look at the Super Eagles, we have the players. Uh, and a lot of persons uh, have been questioning the tactical uh, ability of Jose, uh, Jose Pissero. So I don't know if you also uh, share in, uh, do, uh, in those persons' uh, uh, opinion and also from your own perspective, uh, what do you think we are lagging in the Super Eagles? What needs to be changed? Because it's just uh, a month in between now and the Nations Cup. Yes, I mean, uh, the players, first of all, have their own faults. I observe that uh, whenever they are playing for the Super Eagles, I mean, they play... Uh, with cruise control, uh, there's this 60-70% effort they bring in instead of 100%. There's this care not to get injured uh, because they seem to prioritize their club sites a little more than the national team. And that's you, when they do that, you can't get the best of them. And then secondly, I think what we need to harness now is the, the chemistry between the midfield I mean, and the strike force. Uh, it's a good thing we have a similar body face. But then we need to have the right pieces. Are we going to use Iwobi? I mean, are we going to use Moses Simon? How do we fit in these two behind the strikers? I mean, and then look at Ndidi, who is a good box to box midfielder. How do we harness this? The coach needs uh, to do more study on these players, uh, uh, rotate them, try them on a 4 3 3, try them on a 4 4 2, uh, 5 4 1, and see what, uh, which lineup will be the best that will bring out the potential of our players. Okay, uh, Jose Pissero should try the lineups. 
that will be best and fit uh, the Super Eagles. We know that we like to be uh, we like to play uh, the four four two formation. <coughs> so Jose Pizarro needs to do a lot in that area. He needs to know what to do. Which of the formation are we using? What are we to do? Uh, where and where uh, we need to solve out. And first, the first point of call is the goalkeeping department. That is another area that Jose Pizarro needs to solve uh, uh, the puzzle before the Nations Cup because we cannot actually rely on Francis Uzoho. I'm saying it directly from this show that we cannot rely on Francis Uzoho. If we rely on Francis Uzoho, then we are going to count our losses <laughs> with a lot of baskets of goals. But I am not the coach of the Super Eagles. My own is just to at least say my own opinion. If he, if he likes, he takes, he likes or not. But at the end of the day, we are the fans that will suffer that exit from the AFCON. But uh, uh, let's look at it. Like you said, now quickly let me take you on this before we move over to the next story. The lackluster performance of our players when they come to don the national colors. Who is to be blamed? The NFF or the players? Well, I believe it's the NFF because uh, I believe there's a lot of politicking going on behind the scenes. Uh, favoritism definitely would, uh, had must have come into play. Uh, like that's why I said I love CSR to the bone. Uh, you matter how good you are, if you don't come and replicate what you are doing in Europe on CSR's training ground, you cannot start for CSR. No matter how you say, I, I have a player, he's a very fantastic player. He let him come and try himself. So that is one thing about uh, that kind of coach we need if we really must excel. And it's unfortunate Siasia is not there. I wish uh, Siasia was at the helm of affairs. I tell you what, we wouldn't have the players will give 200% effort to make the team. Okay, the players will give 200 effort to make a team. NFF, you need to wake up. It's a wake up call. You should know what to do so that when these, never these players come around, they can give 200% uh, uh, attention, 200% uh, uh, play for Nigeria. Okay, let's leave that story still dwelling with the Super Eagles, but let's talk about this particular uh, Super Eagles player. And well, it's not a good news, but somehow uh, we just have to be careful right now. That is a uh, win friend in the day um, will be out of Lesotho, the crocodiles of Lesotho and that of a Zimbabwe clash in the 2026 World Cup uh, qualifier. Now, uh, in the, the over the time has been having this injury, uh, missing some games for Nigeria <coughs> and also for club. Now, we will be missing his services against the crocodiles of uh, Lesotho and uh, Zimbabwe. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a huge uh, deficit for the Super Eagles. Uh, thank God uh, Lesotho and Zimbabwe are not so much of a formidable side, even though we know there are no minnows in football. Uh, but then uh, we are glad that at least we are not facing an African giant in the realm of Senegal or Egypt or, or Algeria or Tunisia. Uh, but then I believe that, and unfortunately, apart from Ndidi, we also had that Shemi Ajayi will not be there. We also heard that Bruno Yemechi will not be there, uh, some of our key players. But I believe we have players that, are, that can fill in. Uh, for Wilfred in Didi. We have enough quality uh, that should be able to get the job done uh, on November 17th as we go to face the crocodiles of Lesotho and then three days later we'll be at the Huye Stadium in Zimbabwe. Okay, but, 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 but let's look at this. We have a very uh, lean midfield. We don't really have that depth in the midfield. And I don't know what Jose Pizarro is doing to solve that issue. Now, we always rely on Didi. Is it not high time that uh, we look for a replacement for We Friendly Didi? We Friendly Didi will not play in the Super Eagles forever. But, and with these um, injury worries here and there, this is not the right time that we start looking for, at least. Because, like I mentioned, we have a very lean midfield. If we want to go to the Nations Cup with this particular midfield we have right now, well, that's a very big problem. Yes, uh, sure, it's a very big problem. The midfield doesn't look too good right now. Uh, uh, we need to get scouts. I mean, we have fantastic players playing in different leagues. Nigeria is one of the biggest uh, exports when it comes to football. Uh, we have players, if Ose Pesero uh, can uh, send his foot soldiers, I mean, to look out for great players, 
uh, in you across Europe, I believe we'll have players that are even better than in DD, uh, so that uh, we can fix that midfield challenge that always struggles to connect uh, with the strikers. Yes, okay. Jose Pizarro, uh, the NFF scout, the technical committee of the NFF, at least you watch from the Nigerian League, probably go outside Europe and get midfielders who we can take to the Nations Cup and after the Nations Cup, the World Cup, and probably uh, to be playing for uh, the national team. Okay, let's leave that story now and go straight to Europe where actions are lined up for the top five European uh, leagues, but we have action in Spain, in um, Germany, and then France. Okay, let's look at uh, fixtures that will be coming up uh, tonight. Let's start uh, with the Spanish uh, La Liga. La Spamas uh, will keep a date, will be at home to welcome Atletico Madrid. Now, after that, we go straight to the German Bundesliga, where VFL Bochum 1848 <coughs> will travel uh, to first Darmstadt. 98. Both of them have a number, 88. Then uh, in the Italian Serie A, we'll leave Germany to Italian Serie A. Bologna will play host to Lazio, a team from Rome. And then in the French Ligon, Mempe, where we'll have to see Adams Ako again against uh, Paris uh, German. Now, uh, Abba Michael, uh, my cosign is this particular, uh, particular game, Mempe against uh, PSG. Can Adams Ako, because the yes, when we have uh, Terry Murphy, another Nigerian player in friendly goal against PSG, he scored against them and gave an assist, and he was happy to score a, a very big club. Do you think uh, maybe Adam Ako is going to replicate that uh, performance of uh, um, of uh, Nice player that is Terry Murphy? Yes, I mean uh, when you get call ups, it's because. We are able to replicate performances. Uh, nothing beats uh, consistency uh, when you are a re reliable uh, to bring out and grind out results. Makes you get a call up. If he really, really wants to start, I mean, for the Super Eagles, it's an opportunity for him to prove uh, to Jose Pesero that, yes, I'm a star in Montpellier and I'm proving it once again. Uh, I think we are from the same place. Uh, indigenous wise with uh, adam Marco. okay indigenous wise uh, adam Marco. all right let's quickly go over the fixtures for today again we'll start with the spanish la liga las palmas we play atletico madrid dams that uh, we battle B vfl book 1848 and then in of uh, the uh, italian syria we have bologna against lazio and then paris saint germain we welcome uh, FC Montpellier, that is in the French uh, Legon. Before we go on the show, let's quickly talk about these uh, uh, two transfers. We have two transfers. Let's start uh, with this one, where Barcelona, they are keen on Bayern Munich, Joshua Kimmich. Fantastic player, versatile player. He can play the defense. He can play in the midfield. He can play even at the striking position. And now Barcelona are keen to sign this uh, fantastic player. He's just, uh, he's 28 years of age uh michael fantastic joshua kimmich and barcelona right now are keen to snap this guy up he has not agreed to sign a contract extension for the bavarians yes of course i don't blame him for not signing a contract extension uh with the bavarians they've had six coaches i mean in the last few years six coaches and uh, none of the coaches have spent up to two years since after guardiola left uh, I believe it's one of the reasons why he's not comfortable being on that fit team because different tactics, different approach every now and then. So he, if now it's two Kelders there. He wants a place where there will be consistency. And uh, of course, Xavi, we saw him earlier, he uh, was able to get Gundogan, uh, a German, and now he wants Kimmich, another German. Uh, I love the fact that Xavi is interested in having a German maestros in his midfield. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I can imagine uh, because he only really signed one midfielder in the transfer window. So uh, Kimmich coming to Baka will really, really boost that squad because right now I think it's only Romeo that is the holding midfielder in uh, Baka. So bringing Kimmich in will boost their chances of uh, getting more trophies this season. 
Yes, bringing in Kimmich will boost their chances. Let's see how it happens. Everything is looking well. Maybe it will, the deal will happen in January for Joshua Kimmich. He's a versatile player, like I said from the onset. He can play in any position from the defense line to the striking force. That is the kind of player he is. He plays uh, at the defense for his club for Bayern Munich and also at the midfield. But for the national team, he plays at the heart of the midfield okay let's talk about this last one on the show this is not it uh well the, for this player fantastic player now the english premier league uh brentford fc that is ivan tony has demanded for an exit from the club in january we know the guy is facing some sanctions right now because of um, some issues uh, surrounding him but uh he wants to leave uh, Brentford FC in January. I don't know if that is a good decision for Ivan Tony, Michael. Yes, I mean, it's a good decision for him. He was signed in for 10 million uh, dollar, uh, euros and now he is, his price tag, according to the coach, is 80 million euros. Uh, well, you don't blame them. Uh, this is a player who gave you 20 goals in Premier League last season. Uh, how many players, according to the coach, the only strikers that are better than him are Hurricane, Haaland, and I think Mbappe. Uh, there are just a handful of players, strikers that are better than him in the world, in the words of the coach. Uh, I think if he goes to a team like Arsenal, uh, he should be able to get uh, more than 20 goals in the realm of 25-30. I pray Arsenal picks this guy because that's the aspect of Arsenal, that's finishing. Uh, Arsenal needs an out-and-out -out striker, of which they've not had. Since the days of uh, Adebayo, Thierry Henry, uh, I mean, those days when they used to have strikers who would give you 30 goals, uh, the Beckhams of this world, Van Persis, Arsenal needs that type of striker, and I think Ivan Tony will fit into that. Chelsea should just relax and leave <laughs> Ivan Tony for Arsenal. And of I course, on the other issue, I believe uh, Sergio Busquets' replacement, uh, Kimmich will be a good replacement for. Okay, like, I know you are going to mention uh, Arsenal. I know you will mention Arsenal because that is your team. I know you are, if you eventually you are this guy's manager, you will ask him to go to Arsenal. I know that is what you want. But though, as the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Manchester United are also monitoring the situation and see, let's see uh, where he is going to be playing from January if eventually the club allows him to uh, leave. Okay, uh, Michael, that is where we'll leave it on Sports Update this evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a good time having you on the show. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sports Senator. You are the best on oh. TV. All right, that is it on Sports Update uh, from Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi saying thanks for watching.